Hello. Um, so today is the third third installment of what I'm referring to, for lack of a more creative term, because I'm not that person, is uh, five and five. So five tips in five minutes uh, specific to data governance. And today is going to be all about process. So um, all of these uh, tips are based on the book <laughs> Disrupting Data Governance, and you can find that, oh, I don't know, on Amazon probably maybe a couple of other places. Anywho, um, so the tips are based on disrupting data governance. And, uh, you know, the premise is primarily focused on this idea that data governance, the way that we have historically or traditionally done data governance is broken. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and first and foremost, I think the thing that we've got to sort of set aside is this idea of control or what we have traditionally considered to be command and control. This idea that we have the ability to control everything about our data, how it's defined, the quality, how people use it, it's just not feasible. And it's honestly um, sort of like a, a parochial idea of data governance, something that was probably maybe potentially true in the late 90s when our data warehouses were much, much smaller in terms of size. Uh, it's just not feasible anymore. So the first thing I want to you to think about in terms of tips is stop in thinking about data governance in a command and control way. Um, the second is data ops. So if I could um, really encourage you to think about anything in terms of not just data governance, but really how you think about delivering analytics to your organization, I want you to really think about data ops and that as a process um, or a capability. Uh, if you look at my friend's data kitchen, they're based out of the Boston area. They have a data ops cookbook that you can download. Uh, and it will change really the way that you think about this work uh, as an analytics framework and how you deliver analytics capabilities. But really specifically, there is a good baseline framework there for DG ops, is what I call it in the book. Um, so using the data ops framework for delivering data governance capabilities, that's one of the important things. Uh, I heard a quote from Gartner just recently that uh, using adaptive data governance and data ops to drive improved enterprise agility is one of their top five um, recommendations for organizations right now. So using adaptive data governance, and I was just blown away because we haven't talked about data governance in a real way in a very long time. So I was very encouraged by that. Uh, tip number three, I'm talking too much in this one. I'm sorry, you can tell that process is a big one for me. Tip number three, love your errors. Um, I think that's, so here's the thing, if we think about the idea of you can't control your data and you can't like command and control your data, you also have to think about the idea that the errors in your data are inherent. There's no such thing as error-free data. It just doesn't exist. Um, you can get really, really clean data, but the thing is, is that your errors, regardless to where they exist or how they exist, are telling you something. Process is broken, um, maybe your front-end data entry tool isn't working, but it's telling you something. And if we just sort of dismiss errors and be like, oh, that's crap data, out it goes, then we're missing something. So I really need you to think about... Um, if you're throwing away this idea of command and control and you're really adapting to data ops, then I want you to start thinking about your errors as telling you something, right, in terms of loving your errors. Number four, um, in terms of start a backlog. Even if you don't do anything with it, create an inventory of everything that's outstanding that you know is problematic. It's going to open your eyes. Uh, I know this because I've lived it, but when you're in it and you're you know, running a department every day and you're trying to fix things and you're trying to head off catastrophe, not really having a good set of understanding of inventory is, is a, a, it can be very impactful and limiting for you. Um, data ops and agile, uh, anything requires a backlog, but I tell you what, if you sit down and just take that inventory, it's gonna open your eyes and it's gonna drive you to wanna really think about how you do the work. So I think, Starting a backlog is really important. And then five, 
I've yammered too long now with my five and five, but um, when we think about getting rid of control, we think about data governance and driving data quality and context for our organizations. One of the ways that we always think about this is defining data. Um, and that's always been a really difficult thing because I've talked to lots of people about how long it takes to define a, you know, what one piece of data or one metric or what have you. So I really want you to start thinking about working definitions documents, um, which means that you get a good enough data definition and then you start to adapt to that. And you have methodologies for how to vet those definitions and review them over time. But you don't have to spend 18 months perfectly defining that data because you're using that data during those 18 months, you're figuring out how you actually use the data. So that seems kind of crazy to me. So I want you to start thinking about working definitions documents. In other words, a working definition of your data. So anyway, those are my five and five for process. I'm pretty sure I blew way past that five minutes, but um, this one's a big one. So uh, check out the other ones. I would like to tell you that they're linked, but who knows? And um, if you feel so inclined, check out Disrupting Data Governance. Bye.